All right, guys. Had to get on the road early this morning. So I'm just now getting my run in in the afternoon. I'm about three miles in. I'll let you know when I'm done. All right, crew, welcome back to the Accountability Project. Um, so my run was a little bit late and that one was rough. Uh, that was, this isn't the first time I've, I've had to make up my run later in the day and it's not fun to run later in the day. So uh, I'm gonna try and make it, um, trying to find a way to either wake up earlier to make sure that I get it in um, on days that, that my work day is gonna start earlier. But this, this afternoon running has got to go. Um, that being said, our book today, The Science of Success um, by Napoleon Hill. Today's chapter was, Your Mind Has Hidden Powers. Your Mind Has Hidden Powers. And in this chapter, he was talking about how faith, faith is the hidden power. Belief in more than you currently have. Belief that you can achieve. Um, belief that there is more for you and you are capable of, of reaching it. He said, uh, when, when speaking to, to Henry Ford about what would be the greatest asset if, if he could get more of something, what would it be? And his response was, a hundred men who didn't know the word impossible. Um, because we so often limit our own abilities with our thoughts and that prevents us from moving forward and being progressive and reaching for something because we believe that we can't achieve something. We believe that something's not possible, but once we believe it's possible, and not only is it possible, but we have the capability of reaching and fulfilling that possibility, then the world opens up to us. So next up, how to have confidence and power in dealing with people. Uh, the first chapter is just the key to success and happiness. Uh, I say just as if uh, that's not a huge key. Um, this chapter talks about how human relations are the foundation for success and happiness. And part of the reason for that is we don't live in the ice age anymore. Um, even just a few hundred years ago, you didn't have to be very good in human relations in order to be successful. Um, even, even for instance, Davy Crockett, right? What he ate at night, how, how long or, and, and he was able to sustain and where he lived, all that was determined by his own ability to ac accomplish a task. Um, but we live in an era where whether or not you eat good steak has to do with whether or not you perform at work, whether or not you have a paycheck coming in. And in order to have a paycheck, in order to be successful, um, it requires that we have human interaction, whether that's with our employer, whether that's with our coworkers, whether that's with our customers. Um, if we are not mastering human relations, then we are failing in everything. Um, and the reason that's important to know is that uh, 60, I think it was 66 to 90% of people who get fired from their jobs, it's not for technical reasons. It's because they failed to be able to work well with others. They failed to be able to communicate effectively with others. So the human relations piece is 80% of your success. 20% is gonna be that technical piece. And I, I would argue, depending on the industry you're in, it may be as low as 1% technical skill and 99% human relations as to whether or not you'll be successful. Um, and along with that, in order for human relations to be effective, and, and this is one of the things I love about this book, is it talks about genuine care. Um, this is something in, in, in my suicide intervention trainings that I do, uh, I call the give a shit factor. Um, if you don't care about people, if you don't give a about people, guess what? They know. You don't have to tell them, they know. They can feel it. Um, when you care about people, guess what? They know. You don't have to tell them, they can feel it. And when you, when you have that, they give a S factor, um, it has power in itself with that interpersonal relationship. Because here, here's the thing, if, if you care about them, then your decisions are gonna be based on what's best for them, not what's best for you. And when you're, when you're 
sewing into people and you're giving to people and, and, and you're making decisions based on what's best for your customer, you'll have more customers. You'll have loyal customers. Um, you'll have repeat customers. And, and if, you're, if you're only focused on what's best for you, um, then, then you're not gonna have loyalty. You're not gonna have long-term relationships. You're not gonna, like e e even in a marriage, if everything you do is about you, he or she is gonna leave. But if everything you do is about them, chances are they're gonna reciprocate and make everything about you. So because you're able to, to show in and make everything about them, they're able to make everything about you because you're serving their needs, they're able to serve your needs. But if you're constantly saying, feed me, feed me, I'm doing this because I want to. Uh, I do this because I like it. I wanna do what I want because it fulfills me. Um, all of those are selfish statements. Um, when we are in service to other people, when we care about other people, when we're developing that give a shit factor, it improves our human relation skills immensely. And this book is about how people actually respond, not about gimmicks, but about principles and about values of people. With that, condense the pain of personal growth. I love you, I appreciate you. Stay accountable. Bloop.